charge. President Tinubu taxed media managers of facts and professional integrity. Oshun State House of Assembly Chairman on Media and Public Affairs says no amount of propaganda and lies will destroy massive transformational strides of Governor Ademola Adeleke administration. On the foreign scene, Botswana to legalize undocumented Zimbabweans. Good evening, the major report. I am Babatunde Panooko. President Bola Tinubu has urged media managers to focus on factual reporting and uphold professional integrity. President Tinubu said this at the All Nigerian Editors Conference in Yenegoa, Bayesa State, with the theme Economic Growth and Development Strategies in a Resource Rich Country. The President, represented by the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, who emphasized the importance of the media in national development, said, as editors and media managers, their roles in national development cannot be overemphasized. Tinubu also spoke about the transformative potential of the media in shaping public understanding and contributing to the government's effort to address the nation's challenges. He called on media professionals to report truthfully and engage constructively to help the public understand the government's actions. He further stressed that Nigeria's vast resources, both human and natural, could make the country one of the world's most prosperous nations. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, has pledged the support of the National Assembly for the ongoing reform of the Nigerian power sector, calling for collaboration among all stakeholders to improve the reliability of the national power grid. Honorable Abbas made this observation at the opening ceremony of the International Power Engineering Exhibition and Conference in Abuja. He also called for the integration of renewable energy into the country's energy mix to enhance efficiency and sufficiency. The speaker, who was represented by the Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Power, Honorable August Ghana, noted that over the years, the sector has undergone several reforms and privatizations aimed at improving efficiency and reliability. He said that despite these efforts, the sector continues to face numerous challenges, including inadequate infrastructure, transmission and distribution losses, and insufficient generation and distribution capacities. Also speaking, the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Power, Senator Einaya Baribi, lamented that the poor performance of the power sector has left about half of Nigerians without electricity. He noted that Nigeria's power sector faces numerous challenges, including frequent grid collapses, inadequate generation capacity, inefficient transmission and distribution networks, and regulatory hurdles that impede progress. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwimi, has argued that no law exists in the country that prohibits the prosecution of minors. Fagwimi said, given the offense with which they were charged, the recent arraignment of some protesters, including some minors, charged with treason was not inappropriate, as claimed in some quarters. Fabumi spoke at a katampe in Abuja at the inauguration of the new Office of Law Fair, the Law Corridor, 
He observed that considering the fact of the case, the offenses were serious, adding that President Bola Tinubu as a father and grandfather just to pardon them and drop the charges. On the Supreme Court's judgment in relation to local government financial autonomy, Fabumi said the implementation will be a gradual process ensuring that he would not initiate a project he cannot complete. The federal government has urged local government councils across Nigeria to serve as catalysts for opportunities and progress within their communities. Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Senator Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, made a call during a courtesy visit by the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria at its office in Abuja. Senator Bagudu noted that local governments have the potential to spur development by leveraging the recent Supreme Court judgment that grants financial autonomy to local government councils in the country. The minister urged councils to harness is this autonomy to focus on their unique areas of comparative advantage which would improve governance and stimulate local economic activity. The chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs and the incumbent Deputy Majority Leader, Honorable Adekunle Oladimiji said that no amount of propaganda and fabricated stories are capable of painting massive and transformational strides of Governor Adimola Adelike administration in black. He stated this when he visited four renovated primary health care centers in Ilobu and Ilobu Comprehensive Health Center, which its, re its rehabilitation will start in no record time. Parliamentary reporter Uluatosi Oladoku has the details. Technocrats in Oban Renewal Developments Conquered on Osho, Oshobo, the Ocean State Capital. and renovation of primary health care centers across the state is alluding to this assertion. Ilo Bhutan is one of the leading communities in Oshun, where four primary health care centers have been completely renovated and well equipped with adequate drugs and other essentials. And with primary health center, I remember where PHC, Olobu PHC, Okeana PHC were among the renovated primary health centers in Ilobu. According to the member representing Irep Wadonro Lustis constituency, who doubles at the Chairman House Committee on Media and Publicity, Honorable Adekunle Oladimeji, said the citizens' affinity for the administration of Governor Ademola Adeliki will continue to linger because people's love for Senator Ademola Adeliki is divine, hot, natural, saying that the stateless achievements of the governor has put the main opposition party in disarray, noting that the author of the recent purported libelous news making around the social media alleging that Ocean State government has neglected Ilobu Health Center is baseless. When we want to play politics, we should know how to play politics when and where to play politics. Governor Ademola has been doing wonderfully, you know, well. So anybody trying to undermine his efforts is just doing that. That's baseless accusation because Ilubu has been one of the largest beneficiaries of this government because we have uh, four primary care centers. 
be constructed and renovated right now. He called on rumor parlance and promoters of fake news to seek clarification in order to be fed with adequate and sound information so that they can have better understanding of our government wrongs and stop misinforming the public. Honorable Adekunle Oladimiji stated that government will in no record time commence the rehabilitation and renovation of all secondary health centers across the state. And the good news is that a local comprehensive health center has been selected and among the first set of secondary health centers to receive this lift. A staffer, Mrs. Masurat Abdulaziz, narrated on these and challenges confronting the operation until Governor Ademola Adeleke renovated the health care center. Lori, health facility. Adeleke, ah, one be your juga, one bawa to she want to renovate everything. Tema, oh, bonio. Mr. Karim Taiwo, who was his wife, had just been put to bed, was full of prayer and appreciation to the administration of Governor Ademola Adeleke, saying provision of health care has indeed benefited his family. While reacting to the efforts of the state government, a medical worker at Onobu Maternity, Mrs. Agboladej Janet, lauded the initiative and the unwavering support of Governor Ademola Adeleke, which he said is giving to the health sector in the state. A nursing mother, Mrs. Abdulaziz, scored the administration of Governor Ademola Adeleke high. <laughs> Asha State has been described as a reservoir of opportunities waiting to be explored by real estate developers. The managing director, director and chief executive officer of Aquin's concept engineers Adeliki Adekola gave the insight in Oshibu, the Ocean State Capital, during the second edition of Ocean Global Real Estate Conference. Soya Honorabi has the details. Technocrats in Oban Renewal Developments converge on Osho, Oshobo, the Ocean State Capital, to rob minds on transforming the landscape of the state by identifying as well as developing real estate opportunities across the state. Speakers at the Osho Global Real Estate Conference, including Ambassador Spark of Faji, Mr. Ibrahim Adekunle, who delivered papers, said it is imperative to explore opportunity that is evidently in abundance in the state generated form that will drive investment in the real estate business, stressing that it is a profitable venture that can transform life and the profile of the state. It was equally emphasized that online marketing strategies, publicity with positive approach to business ideas will go a long way in becoming a successful real estate developers. In his keynote address, the State Commissioner for Culture and Tourism, Mr. Biodo Ojo, who described real estate business as reconnecting to cultural background, implore the real estate developers to do more in investing in the state as well as developing heritage sites which are in abundance across the state. Speaking on the topic, the future of Fortune State's urban landscape challenges and opportunities, the managing director and chief executive officer of a Queen's concept engineer Adekunle Adekola in explore in depth challenges and opportunities inherent in the real estate business, adding that strategic planning, creativity, sustaining developments will ensure profitable investment in real estate business. The event features cultural dance as well as unveiling the frame of Oshun River Goddess. <laughs> Reporting for OSBC News. Candidates of political parties seeking to be elected in the Undo governorship election next Saturday suppose have signed the peace accord. Among candidates that signed the peace accord were Governor Lucky Aida Tiwa, Agwala Jai, Olubena Edema, Dr. Abbas Mimiko, among others. Reports say they signed the peace accord in Akure and was supervised by the National Peace Committee headed by General Abdul Salam Abu Bakar. 
that Abu Bakr retired urged all politicians who signed the accord to fully commit themselves and their parties to the letter, brand, spirit of the accord. The former head of state urged them to shun violence and intimidation as well as demonstrate the spirit of sportsmanship. He called on all stakeholders to work assiduously in their capacities to ensure that peace reign supreme during the election and that on those state off-cycle election sets a precedent for other off-cycle elections to emulate. The Inspector General of Police, Kaudi Egberto Kumaska, condemned the spate of extortion allegations against some officers of the force in various areas across the country. He specifically referred to a recent case involving officers, referenced a recent case involving officers from the Zone 16 Zone headquarters in Yenegua, the capital of Bayesa State, where officers identified as ASP Emmanuel Ubon, Inspector Nse Okon, Inspector Adewere Collins, and Inspector Kuro Mare Marine were accused of extorting the sum of 10 million naira from some youths. A statement by the four spokesperson, Moiwa Dejobi, the money had been recovered through the effort of the new Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 16. The officers have been detained and subjected to an orderly room trial. IGP Egberto said the force maintained a zero tolerance policy for any act of corruption and police misconduct, adding that it takes every allegation of extortion and abuse of power extremely seriously. The IGP has, however, reassured the general public that the force will continue to investigate all allegations leveled against erring officers thoroughly while ordering a severe punishment for officers found guilty of misconduct. The Federal Road Safety Commission has concluded a series of activities aimed at reducing road accidents during this year's Ember Month with a call on travelers to report reckless driving in order to achieve the objective. The Plateau State Sector Commander of the FRSC, Maxwell Plateau, disclosed this during the flag off ceremony tagged Speak Up Against Dangerous Driving. Crashes kill more than passengers than drivers, emphasized the need for behavioral change among drivers. He stressed that passengers have the right to a safe drive and encouraged them to caution drivers who violate road rules. The sector commander noted that Nigerians must appreciate the surplus services the transport subsector in the country do to ensure the movement of people, goods and services get to their destinations safely. He however said that the FRSC will at this critical moment intensify and provide prompt response to rescue add more gravity to the enforcement of traffic rules and regulations to ensure safety. You are welcome to our sports segment. the number of teams 